Hey, and welcome back to this series where we are making tic-tac-toe games with a twist. We started this series by creating tic-tac-toe entirely from scratch using Java and even added some twists to that. And eventually we moved to Unity 3D Engine and created tic-tac-toe on the three dimension. As have we done in the previous episode by creating tic-tac-toe on the polar coordinates. Today's episode will be the last episode from this series. And for this episode I chose to create goblet tic-tac-toe. But I personally know this as Russian tic-tac-toe, based on the Russian nested dolls as you might know from this image, also being used to play this variant. Let me show you what I mean by explaining the core of this game. Both players start with a set of markers. In this case, two large, two medium and two small markers. If player X plays a small marker in the middle, player O cannot overtake this spot by using their own small marker, but they can place it in any of the other available spots. If player O chooses a medium marker, it can overtake the small X marker in the middle. Player X can now choose to either overtake the middle again by using their large X marker, or place it anywhere else. In this case, X changes his mind and places a medium X marker next to O. Player O can now choose to take over its own medium O marker in the middle, or take over the medium X marker next to the O. They can do this by using the large O marker. In this case, it decides to take over its own marker. You also get the option to move your own marker. You are only allowed to move your own marker if it's the only one left in a spot or if it's the marker that has overtaken another one. For example, if you have a medium and a big marker, only the big marker can be moved. Now with all the rules set, it's just playing until someone wins. I started by importing the basic tic-tac-toe as I have done in the three-dimensional tic-tac-toe video. With this basic tic-tac-toe set, all I needed to do was put my focus on creating a selection tool. This is the type of selection tool I wanted to create, by just hovering over the markers, and when you press them, they will get in a selected state. This is how I have done this by code. Here are my properties, and I think the most important is the market info struct. This struct contains the marker game object, which we can use to instantiate, and the count, which will be the amount of this type of marker. As you can see here in the example, instead of having two of each markers, I have here increased the count for each marker type. So this time there are two small ones, three medium ones, and four larger ones. Now with all the properties, we can move to the generation code. The generation is actually very similar to the generation of the borders, but let me explain how this works for the selection generation. Let's say we have five markers, just to test inconsistency. And we will have a spacing of one. The width size of our selection will be 10 and it will go from minus 5 to plus 5. As I've explained quickly here, the spacing will be added between each marker. The markers will be indexed on order and it will start from 1 so it will not start at the edge. To do the calculation we first need to find the total size. This is size 10 minus spacing 1 multiplied by the markers 5. This will equal to 5. With this total size we can actually calculate the offset. The offset will now be total size 5 divided by the total markers 5 plus 1. We do plus 1 to not have it end at the edge too. This will result in 0.83. If we then manually calculate this from the first marker, we get 0.83 times index 1 plus spacing 1 times index 1 minus the half of the spacing to get the pivot of the spacing and minus the half of the selection size 5 to get it from range minus 5 to 5. This will result in minus 3.67, which looks like a very good point. If we then calculate, for example, the last position at index 5, we get 0.83 times index 5 plus spacing 1 times the index 5 minus the half of the spacing to get the pivot of the spacing again and minus half of the selection size 5 to get it from range minus 5 to 5 again. And this is resulting in 3.67. If we then, for example, also try the middle one from 3, we get 0.83 times index 3 plus spacing 1 times the index 3 minus the half of the spacing and minus the half of the selection size 5 to get it from range minus 5 to plus 5 again and this will result in minus 0.01 which is close enough to 0 to me and showing the calculation is close enough. After the generation I created the marker script. This script uses the unity mouse methods for the hover and the selected state and I created the method to add a Y position to move the marker up and down based on its state and created a set position method which can be used to place the marker on the actual board. Then on the hitboxes I adjusted it a little bit to remove the instantiation and now get the selected marker from the selection and set this position equal to the transform from the hitbox. 
If we then try to run this, we have a fully operational tic-tac-toe, but now with the markers selected from the selection. We can fully play this game till the end, but it's all looking a bit too static to me. To make it less static, I decided to import Dootween. Dootween is a free tool to add animations by code. For example here, I added Dootween to the add Y position to move the transform to the newly calculated position with a defined duration, in this case, in this case a quarter of a second. If we then try to run this code again, it will look much better, as you can see here in the selection. There's now only resting one more rule to add, and that's actually moving the markers if it's already placed. I've done this by adding a check available boolean method in the hitbox. This method first checks if the game is not ended and there is no, there is no marker selected with the marker that's on the hitbox place already. If it is at any of these cases, it will return true and you can place the marker here. Then to move the marker, I first added some new properties to the marker script. These are all for the dootween values. And if we then move down to the set position method, you will see I changed the transform set position to the dootween do move. In this case, on the do move C axis, which has the same duration as do move X, it will then move the Y position. This will make it like a drop effect that it will first move to the actual position and then drop down to the original position. I also added the option to add scaling. This can really depend per marker. Then, as I've done in the previous episode, I also added the show winner animation, so you can restart the game when it's ended and you can see who has actually won. If you're then gonna try this, you will see that the game will look much better and it's much more fun to play. All the rules are now working, you can move the markers and it even has an end animation to, sh to show who won and you can click anywhere to continue. Now with everything working, we can move to the really fun part, which is adding assets. To download free assets, I always use itch.io. They have a great selection of free assets and for this example, I just searched environmental assets. I eventually found this dungeon asset pack and it is really good quality. It also already has a Unity package, so it could be easily added to our game. I then searched the Unity asset store to find the skybox and I found this pretty cool Starfield skybox. And then I just started to play around and adding them all to Unity. This is the result of the dungeon I created. I created a sort of playground in the middle where the tic-tac-toe will be played and added all the props around it to add some more feeling to it. And with the skybox added, it really changes the whole feeling of the game. For the torches, I created a particle system with, with lightning to create a, some sort of fire effect. This was just a basic approach, I'm not really good at this. But then if I try to play this, it really changed the whole look and feel of the game. It now really looks like something epic. There's only one thing I really wanted to add more to this. And that is, as I said in the beginning, I personally know this variant as Russian tic-tac-toe with the Russian dolls. I tried to search for these Russian nested dolls on itch.io, but I couldn't find any. But I found some on Sketchfab. I found these two really cool looking Russian doll assets, which were both made by the same artist, making the art not too far apart from each other. I then imported these two to Unity, and I added them to the markers, and this is the end result. So there we have it. We now have the tic-tac-toe with the Russian dolls as how I know it. We can now place the smaller markers and overtake them with the bigger dolls just like in real life. But there only rests rest one problem for me. As you can see the dolls are statically rotated. So I created this simple script which will rotate the dolls towards the camera. This is the same as done in the previous episode with the spatial tic-tac-toe. But this time I added the lock feature so we can lock the X and Z axis so the dolls will stay put on ground. So this is it, this is the end of this series of creating tic-tac-toe games with a twist. We started all the way back by creating tic-tac-toe entirely from scratch, and now we created tic-tac-toe variations using Unity 3D Engine. I really hope this inspired you to try and play around with the projects you create, and not just following tutorials and leave it as it is. I see this happening a lot with aspiring game developers, that they just try to recreate tutorials, but then not really learn about it. But if I look at my own personal experience of when I was in aspiring game development, 
I learned almost everything by just playing around with the values and adding some new features by thinking outside of the box. That's why I chose Tic-Tac-Toe, because I thought this was the perfect example where you can quite literally think outside of the box. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please consider giving me a like and subscribe. I got some more videos I got in mind, so stay tuned for that. But for now, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments or send me a direct message on Instagram. I would also like to see if you created your own variation of Tic-Tac-Toe because of this video. And I hope you will have fun by adding twists to games you already created. Goodbye.